Hello and welcome back to another Rust video. Today we're looking at iterators in Rust. So let's have a look. Okay, after executing Rustlings watch inside of the Rustlings repository, we can see that there is a compilation error in standard library types iterators1.rs. And obviously there is some broken expression here. So let's just go ahead and open up that file. So I'm going to open up exercises and then standard library types iterators1.rs. Okay, let's see. So the file says when performing operations on elements within a collection, iterators are essential. This module helps you get familiar with the structure of using an iterator and how to go through elements within an iterable collection. Right, okay, and then we can see that there is a vector of some string slices and here is another variable that we need to create probably. And then we see a bunch of assertions here where we can see that we call dot next on our my iterable fav fruits variable and check whether they're equal to some value. Now, if you've seen in one of the other videos um, that I'm linking up here, we've already touched a little bit on iterators. And iterators are very useful when we're dealing with a uh, collection of values and we want to operate on every single value that they provide. So for example, if we have a vector of some values like here in this code, and we want to transform every single value or we want to call some function on every single value that is in that vector, we need something to iterate over it. And that's why we can turn collections like vectors and hash maps into iterators. And once they're iterators, we have a bunch of new APIs, functions, combinators, as they're called, to operate on them. So what we can do here now, we can see that, again, we call dot next on this my iterable faf fruits variable. The dot next function is one of the APIs that an iterator provides. And what it does, it gives us the next value of that iterator. So if we call it the first time, we'll get the banana. If we call it a second time, we get the custard, apple, and so on and so forth. And at some point, we'll reach the end of the collection. And if we call next after that, usually there is some indicator that tells us, hey, there is no more value in that iterator. And, and that's what we have to deal with here as well. So let's turn this vector into an iterator and we take our my faf fruits variable and we call iter on it iter is an api that takes the vector turns it into an iterator and that iterator gives us shared references to every single value of that collection when we call next on that iterator so down here then we can see we call dot next on it so that means we get the first value and the first value is a reference to the string slice banana we can also see that the value is wrapped in an option. That's because, again, we could have already reached the end of the list or the end of the collection. And when we call next on that, getting an option is actually perfect because an option can tell us whether there is a value or not by giving us either sum of some value or none because there is no value. And so that gives us everything we need to complete this exercise. So here we see that when we call next a second time, we have probably some of a reference to the string slice and then custard uh, apple. And down here we have the same uh, after calling next another two times. After avocado, we get the yummy peach. And then here we get the raspberry. And then if we call next again, and now this is where we've reached the end of the list. If we now call next again, there is no sum value anymore. Instead, what we get is none. And that tells us, hey, this iterator has no more values to provide. Okay, saving that, going back, and we see that this is compiling. Okay, cool. One thing to note here is that there is another method to get an iterator. Itermute is what it's called. This is what gives us mutable references to every single element that we're iterating over. If you want to learn more about these two APIs, I've written an article about that that I'm going to link in the description and hopefully you find it useful. Okay, removing the comment and moving on to the next one. Okay, next up in iterators two, we have a bunch of errors here again. There is a function capitalized first. We have a bunch of errors here and I'm just gonna go ahead and take a look at that file right away. So I'm gonna open up iterators 2rs Okay, and here we see that in this module, you learn some of the unique advantages that iterators can offer. Step one, complete the capitalized first function to pass the first two cases. 
Step two, apply the capitalized first function to a vector of strings, ensure that it returns a vector of strings as well. And then step three, apply the capitalized first function again to a list. Try to ensure it returns a single string. Okay, Ooh, let's see. Um, okay, so here we have a function capitalized first, it takes a string slice, and then it calls chars on that. This is giving us an iterator of characters and then here we see that we call next on that iterator only once so that should give us the first character of that string slice and then this already properly tells us okay if there's actually no first character so if it's an empty string that we pass down to this function then this will return just an empty string or otherwise there's some work happening here. We have access to the first character, we call collect on it, we turn it into a string as we go about it, and then we concatenate the rest of the iterator. So the rest of the characters to that string. And then down here we have a bunch of tests where we can see that it should capitalize the first character of any given string slice. It should return an empty string if we pass down an empty string. And here are the two tests that we need to make work as well. So let's see what the description said again. Step one, complete the capitalized first function to pass the first two cases. Okay, so this function needs to indeed make sure that the first character, the one that we have access to here, is actually uppercased or capitalized. Now I know that this thing is a value of type character because it comes from the chars function which returns an iterator that yields character values. Now a value of type character has a two uppercase function so that should turn uppercase and then we can collect it into a string. Now this is actually a pretty cool example where we can see that the turbofish syntax here where we use double colon and then angle brackets and then a type to specify what type we want to collect our iterated values into. It's not just possible to uh, take an iterator and then uh, collect its value into a vector. We can actually collect them into many different types depending on what we're dealing with. So um, in this case, we can collect them into a string. And the reason this works is because we actually can call collect on a single char as well. The reason we can do that is because a char also implements the iterator trait. And that is because sometimes uh, specific characters are actually represented with more than one uh, bytecode. So then by iterating over a single character, you might actually get multiple values. That's totally possible. So that's why we have the collect API on a character, which may not be what we expect in the first place. And then when we say we collect it, we collect it into a string because a string is really also just a collection of characters after all. And then we just concatenate it with the rest of what's in the iterator by turning the iterator into a string slice. So that should make the function work. Let me save that and see if we get any better results here. This still looks very, very broken. So let's go back to the file and see what else we need to do. Okay, so here in step two, we have this test that checks whether it capitalizes words as well. So we have a vector of a bunch of words, hello and world in this case, and then we have capitalized words as a variable, which is a vector of string, and we need to assign it some value because here we see that it should be indeed a vector of string with the same words that we have here, just with the capitalized first character in every single word. And we can do that very nicely with iterators as well. We know we have a vector of words, so we take the words and we can then turn them into an iterator. And when we've done that, we can actually take every single word that we're iterating over. So we can use a function for that, that iterators provide, which is the map function. Now the map function takes a function as argument, which has access to the value that we're iterating over, in this case, a word. And then we can map whatever we get to a new value. Now, what we want to do, we want to take whatever word we get and capitalize the first character so we can put it then back into a vector after that. So we take the word and then we call capitalize first on it. And then once that is done with all of the values that we have in the iterator, we can just collect that back into a vector again, and that should give us the vector of string. And here we don't have to use the Toberfish syntax because we already have the type annotated here in the variable. So the compiler is gonna be able to 
infer that we are indeed interested in collecting into string values or into a vector of string values rather. Okay, and then in the next one here, we can see the same thing, just that we deal with different words here. And also it should be collected into a string type, not into a vector of strings. So very similar, we can say we take our words and then we iterate over them. And then actually all we have to do is really just collect them back, but into a string. And that should already do it. Oh no, we also need to capitalize the words first here, as we can see here. So once we iterated over it, we map again over every single word that we get. Then we call capitalize first on that. And then once that is done, we collect the values back into a string. That should do it. Okay, let me save the file and see if that works. Yay, this is working. Okay, cool. Nice. So I'm going to go and remove that comment here and move on to the next one. Okay, next up we have errors in iterators 3.rs where we deal with a function divide that needs to return a result, but it found a unit type value. So it's probably not returning anything at the moment. Let's have a look at that. Iterators 3.rs. Okay, cool. The file says, this is a bigger exercise than most of the others. You can do it. Here's your mission. Should you choose to accept it? We do accept that. Yeah. Complete the divide function to get the first four tests to pass. Uncomment the last two tests and get them to pass by filling in values for x using division results. And then let's see, what do we have? We have an error type here with two different variants and we have a struct here, not divisible by error. And that is used here in the error type as well. So it probably means that when we emit a division error with the variant not divisible, we probably wanna give it some information here. And then we have this divide function that doesn't do anything. That's the one that we need to implement. And down here, we see a bunch of tests. Now the first test says, that it should successfully divide these two numbers and it returns a result of a number and then here we see a test where it checks that it's failing or emitting an error in this case the not divisible error and down here it says it should emit an error when we try to divide by zero and also that if we try to divide zero by anything else that should be fine as well okay and then there's a bunch of other tests here commented let's look at that in a second let's first take a look at the first four tests here that we need to make work. Okay, so coming back to this function, we have this divide function, which returns a result of i32 and a division error. And here it says the function should calculate a divided by b if a is evenly divisible by b. Otherwise, it should return a suitable error. Okay, so let's see, what do we need to do? So we can say that if b equals zero, then we know we're trying to divide by zero, in which case we for sure want to return an error of, uh, what do we have here? Division error divide by zero, right? So division error and then divide by zero. Then we want to know if A is evenly divisible by B. And we can do that by checking if A modulus B equals zero, or if it actually not equals zero, then we know it's not evenly divisible by B. So then we know we want to return another error, in this case, a division error of not divisible, right? And that one takes a not divisible error type, which is a struct that takes a dividend and a divisor, I guess is what it's called. I actually don't know. Anyway, so we give it the dividend here and that is going to be A and then the other thing that is going to be B. Okay. And otherwise we know that everything's fine. So we can just say we return, okay, A divided by B. I think that should be it. So let's save that and see what the compiler says. Oh, we have a syntax error here. Down here, we need to make sure that we close the error as well. Okay, cool. So this is compiling and the tests are passing. So this function is doing what it needs to do. Let's take a look at the other ones here. I'm going to remove the comments. Okay, so it says result with list. So here we have a vector of numbers 
And then we have division results. What we do is we take the numbers, we turn them into an iterator, and then we map every value that we get to the result of divide that number by 27. So this is going to give us a vector of result of I32 and a division error. I usually put comments like this um, behind code like this because it just helps me keep track of what transformations are going on. So you don't you don't have to do that. Um, don't be confused by that. I just I just hope it helps. Okay, and then here we see we have an assertion that checks whether the given result we have is actually a result that is holding a vector of the values. Okay. And that is this one here. So how do we make this work? We have our division results and we want to get from a vector of result of I32 division error to a result of vector of I32 and division error. Now, here's a cool thing in Rust when it comes to collecting values from iterators. When we're dealing with a vector of results and we actually want to get a single result that holds all of the result values, then we can actually collect them into a result of those values. So in other words, what this means is we can take this division results and we can say we collect them into a result of, uh, what do we want? A vec of I32 and a division error. And then, so what this is actually gonna do, it's gonna take the values of the iterator and filters out all of the values that are okay values and maps them back into a result. So we can we can transform this type to this type with just a single line of code simply by collecting them back into a new type and using this type annotation here. And okay, and then we see here a list of results. We have pretty much the same code, but we see here that we indeed want to have a list of results now, not a result of a list. List. So let me just copy this over here and then adjust it accordingly. So here again, we're dealing with a vec of result of I32 division error. And that's pretty much what we need to do. We just need to collect these values then and tell Rust that this is the value that we want to collect into. So I'm going to change this annotation to a vec of a result of I32 and a division error. And that should give us exactly what we want. So let me save that and see if that's working. Okay, we have an error here. Oh, right, of course. So the turbo fish syntax needs to have these colons. I'm very sorry. So colon, colon, and then the type is there. Trying again. And there is more that's wrong. Obviously, I messed up the angle brackets. There is one angle bracket missing here. What else do we have? Let's see. Oh, right. Here we need to make sure that the result has the division error, not the vector. Sorry, just messed up the angle brackets. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, and there's one more. Okay, let's have another look here. We have a vec of result of I32 and we're closing this one. Oh, we need one more bracket here. Uh, you know, usually you have IDEs that help you with that. I, I just, I don't have that. Okay, try again. Yeah. It's working. Okay, I'm gonna go and remove the comment and hope that nobody has seen what just happened. Okay, and that's it with iterators for now. I think I need to go and uh, uh, hide behind a rock or something. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this was uh, informative and useful and yeah, make use of collect. Thanks for watching.